We begin with news in the search for the missing submersible. Missing submersible. Missing submersible. Missing submersible. Missing submersible. Missing submersible. Near Missing near the wreck of the Titanic with five people. On June 18, 2023, a private sea exploring company was about to do what no one else had done before. Take commercial clients to the wreckage of the Titanic, 12,500 feet deep under the waves of the Atlantic Ocean. This company was none other than OceanGate. Stockton Rush, owner of OceanGate, joins me now. Thank you for being here with us. Great to be here. Led by an eccentric CEO, a man with a dream to break barriers and test the limits of underwater exploration, this journey would take an unexpected twist. Only two hours into their dive, the communication line between the submarine and its mothership suddenly disappeared, and the submarine was left floating in the abyss. So how did this happen? Why did the submarine lose communication? Was it doomed from the beginning? And did they ever find it? In this video, we'll dive into the story of the Titan submarine's journey and explore why it lost its way. From the pioneering days of the company to the construction of the submarine, and finally, the events of the fateful day, we will uncover what really happened to OceanGate's Titan submarine. Stockton Rush, early life and planning. This journey started with a young boy named Richard Stockton Rush III, who dreamed of making it to the bottom of the ocean floor and democratizing ocean exploration. While the name might not ring a bell right away, he's the driving force behind the ambitious Titan expedition. Rush's early life was a blend of curiosity and determination, but what led him to the deep blue? Let's rewind a bit. Born in the 1960s, his early days were spent being fascinated by the mysteries of the world. His first fascination was space. He dreamed of flying to Mars and being the first to set foot on it. However, as he grew up, at the age of 18, his dreams of becoming an astronaut were shattered. He was told his visual acuity was not good enough to become a pilot and thus could never become an astronaut. But rather than giving up, this pushed Rush into the world of deep sea exploration. And it wasn't just a childhood phase. It shaped his career and dreams. His passion for marine life and underwater exploration was evident early on, leading him to pursue studies in marine engineering and oceanography. But how does a boy with dreams of the ocean become the CEO of a pioneering company like OceanGate? It wasn't just by chance. Rush's dedication saw him climbing the ranks in marine enterprises, constantly pushing boundaries and challenging the status quo. His vision? To democratize deep sea exploration. The issue was that out of the 100 deep sea submarines that existed, only a few were available to be bought, let alone piloted down to the deep. Most were government property and not available to the public. With tight restrictions on deep sea submarines, he decided the best approach was to innovate. By 2005, OceanGate was born with the help of Guillermo Sonlin, and Rush was on the brink of turning his vision into a reality. This was a company with a vision to make the ocean's depths accessible, not just to scientists, but to everyday adventurers. Fast forward to 2023, with several submarines in their arsenal and deep dives completed, they were about to do what no one else had done before. Through innovation and dedication, the Titan submarine, developed by OceanGate, would dive to a staggering depth of 12,500 feet to visit the Titanic and take five commercial clients with it. The man himself, Stockton Rush, couldn't resist the moment and thus was one of the passengers. Joining him were four other crew members, which included Hamish Harding, a British businessman, pilot, and adventurer from the United Arab Emirates. Then there's Paul Henri, a 77-year-old shipwreck expert who had visited the Titanic before. And finally joining them were Shazada Dawood, a Pakistani-British billionaire with a drive for adventure, and his son, Suleiman. The plan was to dive on June 18, 2023, off the coast of Newfoundland, Canada. The dive was scheduled for mid-morning, a time when the ocean's currents were predicted to be at their calmest. With the help of the mothership, Polar Prince, the communication and navigation would be coordinated until the submersible reached the Titanic. 
But fate had other plans. Unforeseen weather delay. When the day of the dive dawned, it came with an unexpected challenge, the weather. The North Atlantic isn't known for its calm waters, and on this particular day, it seemed even the ocean was holding its breath. Dark clouds loomed overhead, and the waves grew restless. For any other expedition, this might have been a sign to postpone, but the Titan team had a narrow window, and delays weren't on the agenda. Why didn't they cancel? Too much was at stake. With each client paying $250,000 and the Titanic's powerful allure, the pressure was high. The Titanic, a ship once deemed unsinkable, had set sail in 1912, only to meet a tragic end. Its wreckage lay undiscovered for decades, with many expeditions failing to pinpoint its final resting place. It wasn't until 1985 that the shipwreck was finally located, and since then it has been a site of fascination drawing explorers and researchers from around the world. Recent expeditions have raised more questions than answers. Why did the Titanic sink? Were there factors at play that we still don't understand? This allure was hard to overcome, and the confidence of the CEO also played a crucial role. He believed their state-of-the-art design was meant to withstand the pressures of the deep, and a bit of rough weather wouldn't deter him. But as the Titan prepared for its descent, the crew couldn't shake off a feeling of unease. The ocean's depths are unpredictable, and while the Titanic's story is well documented, the Titan's was yet to be written. What lay ahead for the Titan and its crew? The answer was hidden in the deep blue below, waiting to be discovered. Titan's submarine journey. The moment had arrived. With a mix of anticipation and apprehension, the Titan began its descent into the abyss. The initial moments were filled with wonder. The ocean's beauty is unparalleled, and with only 5% of the ocean depths explored, there's still much to be learned. But as the Titan ventured further, the light began to fade, replaced by the inky darkness of the deep sea. During the initial 90 minutes of Titan's descent, it maintained contact with the polar prince at 15-minute intervals. But then, something went amiss. Communication ceased after a message at 11.15 a.m. At first, it seemed like a minor glitch, something that could be easily rectified. But as minutes turned into hours, it became evident that the situation was far more serious. The dive to the Titanic was supposed to take two hours down and six hours up. The Titan was scheduled to resurface at 4.30 p.m., but nothing came up. By 7.10 p.m., three hours after the Titan failed to resurface, the U.S. Coast Guard was alerted about its absence. Hours after the Titan went underwater, a U.S. Navy system meant for tracking military submarines picked up a sound resembling an implosion. I can't tell you what the noises are, but what I can tell you is, and I think this is the most important point. Despite underwater banging sounds heard earlier, today more underwater sounds described as banging noises were detected. But was it true? Or could that have been a distress signal sent out by the submarine to call for a rescue? Nobody knew for sure. The problem wasn't just technical. The very environment they were in was hostile. The pressure of the deep sea, combined with the malfunctioning equipment, created a volatile situation. The crew was trapped in a metal capsule, thousands of feet below the surface, with no clear way out. As the hours dragged on, the gravity of their predicament became clear. They were alone, surrounded by the pressure of the ocean, with a dwindling supply of oxygen and a submersible that was no longer responding. Polar Prince started searching for Titan. Back on the surface, tension and worry grew. The Titan was equipped with technology to communicate with its mothership even in distress. The silence from the deep was deafening. So, a rescue mission was called. The U.S. Coast Guard, U.S. Navy, and Canadian Coast Guard spearheaded the search for the missing Titan. They were aided by aircraft from the Royal Canadian Air Force, U.S. National Guard, and a Royal Canadian Navy ship, among others. The search spanned 900 nautical miles from Cape Cod's coast and involved surface and underwater sonar searches. John Cabot is conducting sonar searches. Weather conditions in the remote location posed challenges. 
Notably, the Titan lacked an acoustic beacon, a standard device in many submersibles to aid rescue efforts. On June 20th, the ship Deep Energy arrived with equipment suitable for deep sea searches. One of the primary tools in their arsenal was the ROV, or Remotely Operated Vehicle. These underwater drones are equipped with cameras and sensors designed to navigate the challenging terrains of the ocean floor. The ROVs were deployed, scanning the area where the Titan was last known to be. Survival, death, and news. But the ocean floor is a vast and varied landscape, with valleys, mountains, and trenches. The Titanic wreck site is already hard enough to reach, let alone a tiny sub that has gone missing. Carrying five people to the wreckage of the Titanic, that search now passing the critical 96-hour... Initially, Titan had a 96-hour air supply for its five crew members, which would have run out on the morning of June 22, 2023, assuming the vessel remained sealed. Days turned into nights and back into days. With each passing hour, the hope of finding the Titan and its crew alive began to wane. The crew knew the importance of their mission, not just for the families waiting anxiously for news, but for the entire world watching. Then, a breakthrough. One of the ROVs detected an anomaly, a debris field that didn't match the known layout of the Titanic wreck. As the drone moved closer, the grim reality became clear. It was the Titan, or what remained of it. The debris was scattered over the ocean floor, indicating a catastrophic event. The Titan had imploded, a fate many submersibles fear when venturing into the deep. The pressure of the ocean had proven too much for the vessel, leading to its tragic end. The joy of discovery was overshadowed by the somber reality. Five souls had been lost to the ocean's depths, and the world mourned their loss. It became clear that the implosion was swift and devastating. The pressure differential at those depths is immense, and even a small breach in the submersible's hull could lead to instant catastrophe. The crew likely had little time to react. With the crushing pressure of the depth, death was instantaneous. News of the Titan's fate spread rapidly. International media outlets covered the story extensively, with headlines echoing the shock and sorrow of the tragedy. It's gone missing near the wreck of the Titanic with five people. For the missing Titan submersible. Find this missing submersible. The missing submarine. We begin with news in the search for the missing submersible. But the story doesn't end here. As the initial shock began to subside, the focus shifted to understanding the events leading up to the tragedy. How did a state-of-the-art submersible, designed to withstand the pressures of the deep, meet such a catastrophic end? Were there signs that were missed? And what does this mean for future deep-sea expeditions? The search for answers showed a darker side to this story, one that the passengers were not aware of. Research and questions raised. The tragic implosion of the Ocean Gate submersible Titan sent shockwaves throughout the marine exploration community. As the dust settled, a series of alarming revelations began to emerge, painting a picture of negligence, ignored warnings, and a potential disaster waiting to happen. Patrick Leahy, co-founder of Triton Submarines, didn't mince words when he referred to the Titan as an experimental monstrosity that should never have carried people. His concerns were not unfounded. Leahy had personally pleaded with his longtime friend and Titanic expert, Paul-Henri Narjolet, who tragically lost his life in the incident, not to dive with Oceangate. James Cameron was also another critic. Well, it is, look, people are fascinated by Titanic. They've been fascinated by that story since it sank. In an ABC News interview, Cameron mentioned that the Titan submersible had sensors inside its hull designed to alert the crew when it began to crack. He critically stated, if that's your idea of safety, then you're doing it wrong. He believed that the passengers likely received a warning that the hull was starting to delaminate or crack. Cameron emphasized that the passengers probably initiated emergency procedures, as evidenced by the fact that they had dropped their ascent weights and attempted to ascend. About, you know, the engineering that goes into subs, I designed and built my own sub and went. Rob McCallum, co-founder of EYOS Expeditions, had previously warned OceanGate's CEO, Stockton Rush, 
about the dangers of taking the uncertified Titan submersible to such extreme depths. McCallum's concerns were met with dismissal. A New Yorker article shed light on the Titan's dubious reputation. Stockton Rush, the co-founder and CEO of OceanGate, had grand ambitions, marketing the Titan as a vessel that could transport people to the Titanic wreckage for a hefty fee. But behind the scenes, concerns were rampant. So what was the Titan made out of, and why was it so experimental? The Titan submersible was primarily crafted from carbon fiber and titanium. It's made from carbon fiber with titanium caps at each end. These materials, known for their impressive strength to weight ratio, were chosen to balance lightweight maneuverability and the robustness required to endure the deep ocean's crushing pressures. However, Titan's design was labeled experimental, and for good reasons. Traditional deep sea submersibles typically employ thick steel or other metals proven to resist deep ocean pressures. In contrast, Titan's reliance on carbon fiber was a bold departure from this convention. What made matters worse was that the Titan had previous incidents closely resembling the situation in 2023. Carl Stanley, a renowned submersible expert and a friend of OceanGate's CEO Stockton Rush, was aboard the Titan during a dive in the Bahamas in 2019. During this dive, Stanley heard alarming cracking sounds. After the dive, concerned about the safety of future passengers, he sent an email to Rush urging him to conduct more rigorous testing before taking on paying passengers. Fast forward to now, and many contribute the tragic implosion of the Titan to a catastrophic failure of its hull. As the submersible dived deeper, the immense pressures it faced likely exploited any weaknesses in its design or materials. The situation was further exacerbated by the Titan's safety protocols. Relying on sensors to alert the crew once the hull began to crack might have been too little too late. Once a breach occurred, the rapid influx of water would have caused an immediate and violent implosion. The combination of the Titan's experimental nature and potential design flaws culminated in this devastating event. The tragic end of the Titan was not just a result of unforeseen circumstances, but a culmination of ignored warnings, overlooked issues, and a culture of negligence. Throughout this story, the ambitious vision of OceanGate's CEO, Stockton Rush, the brave souls who boarded the Titan's expedition, and the chilling sequence of events leading to its tragic end. This wasn't just the ocean's unpredictability, but a result of ignored warnings and misplaced priorities. The story of the Titan is just one of many. In the coming weeks, we'll come up with more stories of what, why, and how topics.